Welcome to Art Attack, the show that proves you don't need to be an expert to be a great artist. What's an Art Attack? Well, these are Art Attacks we're gonna have today. Take a look, as the best part will be, trying them out yourself. An Art Attack that can swallow up all the trash in your room. A giant Art Attack of musical proportions. A growing technique used in African artwork. An art attack that will let people know the mood you're in. And handy environmental tips from the very friendly Vincent Van Coconut. Final touch here. And... Oh man, I made a mess. <laughs> it's okay, I have something to help me clean up. Let me introduce to you Munch, the paper-eating monster. Each time I finish an artwork, he gets excited because he gets to eat up all my trash. His favorite is leftover colored paper. Especially the blue ones. Would you like a paper eating monster to help keep your work area clean too? Let's reuse a big plastic water bottle. Draw a line around the upper part with a permanent marker. Make sure you leave a space in the back without marking. Get an adult to help cut over the mark line. And you'll end up with something like this. Our paper-eating monster Munch now has a big mouth. It would be better if Munch could see what he was eating. So we should give him big googly eyes. You just need two ping-pong balls, or maybe plastic bottle caps that could look like eyes. So what you do now is, you take the ping-pong ball and place it on the top part of the bottle. Use as much tape as you need to keep it firm. Now that's the first eye. Do the same for the other eye and take a look at the next step. Once the eyes have been securely taped, put the water bottle on a piece of cardboard and outline its circumference. Draw in the teeth like this sharp and towards the center, prepared to bite. Then, have them cut out. Now place the fierce teeth to cover the opening of the bottle's top half. Use enough tape all around the edges to make sure it is firmly attached. Then, cut a piece of cardboard in a rectangular shape and tape it to the back of the head, right where the lid joins the body of the bin. This acts as a hinge, so that the bin will stay supported when it's open. So far, we've got a googly-eyed plastic bottle structure that could look like a paper-eating monster. But it's got to have a strong outer surface if it's a monster that has to deal with all that mess in the room. Use Art Attack paint, made with one part water and one part glue and stick pieces of paper towels until you cover the entire piece. Use a broad paintbrush so you can work faster. It's important that you cover the inside of the bottle too, because that needs to be painted as well. Now leave it to dry. It won't be long now till Munch is by your workspace, ready to eat up any unwanted paper. Now's the best part. We give Munch a personality of his own, and to do that, we're going to have to draw and paint. Let's do it! Start with some of Munch's main features. Draw in his eyes. Give him giant spots that cover his monster skin. Like this. And now, let's color the monster. Paint the inside of the mouth with black so that it'll look like a mysterious, deep, dark, never-ending pit, ready to swallow tons of unwanted paper. Let's paint the skin green, like a frog. Careful not to paint green over the spots. The spots will be orange with a yellow outer ring. Now, paint his eyes. Let's use yellow first, and then surround it with red. Munch is now complete. With his sharp white teeth and spotty skin, he's ready to swallow up all that bits of trash. 
here we've painted Munch green and given him sharp teeth. But you can give your paper eating monster any personality and color you want. This monster trash bin is blue with a monster fin behind and has thousands of teeth to grind everything. His favorite paper is blue too. Now Pinky Bin is a girl monster. She likes black color paper. To show off her fashionably girlish charm, she's got pink lips. Now it's your turn. Create a paper-eating creature to place by your desk and keep your work area clean. A monstrous art attack for you to try yourself. Vincent Van Coconut here, reminding you how to make a monster trash bin. Reuse an empty water bottle. Draw a line around the upper part of the bottle with a permanent marker. Make sure to leave a space without joining the line at the back. Get help from an adult to cut the bottle where the line is drawn. Use two ping pong balls for googly eyes. For the teeth, take a cardboard sheet and trace out the bottom circumference of the bottle. Draw in really sharp teeth. Cut this out and tape it to the opening of the top half. Next, cut a cardboard rectangle and tape it behind where the lid joins the body to act as a hinge. Cover the entire surface with art attack paste and pieces of paper towel. Leave it out to dry. Then, draw in the details of your monster. Finally, color the inside of the mouth with black acrylic paint and the rest with any color you choose. This storm is stirring up all the trash left behind on my island. But look, I have my monster trash bin friends by my side to help keep all this trash in one place so that my island will stay beautiful and clean. There's one to eat up all the paper, one that will collect all the organic waste that can be recycled into fertilizer, and one more to hold all the unwanted plastic bottles that can be reused, of course. A great team of monster trash bins as guardians to the environment. Wonderful! It's a fish! Have you ever tried to play the guitar? Our art attack artist Alex tried playing the guitar for the first time and didn't get a good reaction from his audience. But that didn't stop him from creating this giant art attack that made beautiful music. Now take a look and see if you can discover what he uses the long screws for. <laughs>
Mexican mariachi band. Ay, 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 ay. Did you notice what he used these for? Take a look again. There's Alex, and he's placing the long screws on the ground as the guitar peg. That was an awesome giant art, Alex. But I think you're gonna need guitar lessons. There's so much more to discover and create with Art Attack. It's all waiting for you online at DisneyChannel-Asia.com. You can share all your colorful works online too. <laughs> It's Butterfly! There is a particular style of art that is native to the wild continent of Africa. Today's technique will show you the secrets of giving an African style to your creations. The first thing you will notice about African art is that they portray men and animals a lot in their paintings and sculptures. Here are some wild giraffes. For the male giraffes, the more powerful the neck, the stronger they are. And look at the details that is used in this style of drawing. They use lines, dots, and spirals. Would you like to know how to apply this style to your drawing? <laughs> Create a drawing on colored paper. Here, we have a drawing of a mammal from Africa called the meerkat. For this picture, start with the sun. We fragmented the drawing to work with this technique. To give the clouds depth, Shadow them with light blue crayon. And then highlight the shape with white. Use earth tones to color in some stripes behind the meerkat. And to give the meerkat some texture, color in some parts with light brown crayon to make it look like fur. Let's also draw in bits of hair for a more realistic finish. Draw the grass with stripes and very simple shaped flowers. And then draw in some details with white. Like this. Complete this entire area with white spirals. This African style drawing is coming together quite well. Have you noticed the kinds of colors that are mostly used in African art? That's right, brown, orange, and yellow. Tones inspired by the colors of the earth and the sun. Now let's work on the finer details. With color pencil, draw spiral shapes on the clouds. Outline the meerkat with a black permanent marker. Draw its tiny paws and also the features of its face. With a thinner marker, draw tiny hairs outwards. On the other side, use a white correction pen. Do you see the effect starting to come through? Finally, draw in some diagonal lines where the spirals are to make them look like stripes. Our African style work of art is done. A simple but effective technique to achieve a different look. You can apply this to other drawings too. Like this zebra. It may take a while longer to complete, but patience is the key to good art. And what do you think of this one? A native African tribe, mostly with earth tones. And remember to experiment with the combination of pencil, acrylic and crayon. Try it yourself. I have a tree friend who lives in Africa. When you go on an African safari, you can take pictures of the most beautiful animals that live in the African savanna. I've decided to put my African art skills into a self-portrait to send to my tree friend. Isn't it African-like? Is that an elephant I hear? And a lion too? There must be an animal safari on the other side of the seashore.
It's a bird! Does your mood change throughout the day? Like sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you're really happy. Then you get annoyed with something for no reason. And then one of your friends does something to surprise you. Or maybe you see a big bug staring straight at you. Then when it's bedtime, you get a bit sad because your day of fun is over. You could use a mood indicator to hang outside your room door so that your friends and family will know what mood you're in. Let's make one. Take a piece of cardboard. Draw a perfect circle with a makeshift compass by using a cardboard strip. Poke a pencil at each end. Use one pencil as the axis so it stays in position, while the other pencil goes around, drawing the perfect circle. Now, cut it out. Trace its outline on a thin cardboard. You'll end up with two identical discs. Have this one cut out too. Take a round object like this roll of tape and draw a circle like this. This will be the head with a strange hairdo. Now draw the character's body. Look, here are the arms and the legs. You won't need to draw the face here because this circle, that's the face, will be cut out. Now it's all about giving your character different moods. This part's easy. Place the disc with the drawn boy on the other disc and draw in his facial expressions according to his mood. Using the cut-out space of the head as a guide, draw a happy face inside, like this, with a smiling mouth. Now turn the disc and draw a sleepy face. Draw the mouth and the eyes downward. Move the disc again and draw an expression of surprise, with his mouth and eyes wide open. Finally, on the side, Draw an angry or annoyed face with the tongue out and eyes closed. Now put a little plasticine right in the center between both discs. Make a hole with a pencil. Then take that marking right through to the disc underneath. Puncture this mark too with the plasticine at the bottom. Remember to make sure that the facial expressions coincide exactly with the cutout head. Or you just might end up with the eye above the shoulder or half a smile. We've already punctured holes. But before joining the disc, let's color them first. Paint the background of your character completely. We'll make his sweater striped with white and green. Use any color for his hair. Then work on the outlines with black permanent marker, like this. Finally, enhance the texture by using crayons. Paint the second disc with the facial expression, entirely with a pale pink. Once the paint is dry, you can color in the details of the facial expression. Retrace the lines with black permanent marker. and add some shading to the different expressions with crayons. Once you've colored it, use a paper fastener, like this one. Put it through both holes, then flip it around the back. Open up the fastener to secure the disc together. And the disc should move like this. Here's a different character for a mood indicator. From a surprise looking girl, 
to an angry girl? Or what if your mood was shown by the different weather? A lightning storm when you're furious and a sunny day when you're happy. An art attack that you can have lots of fun with. Designing your own mood indicator. Try it out for yourself and we'll have more ideas the next time in Art Attack. Bye!